Betty Bowers, America's favorite Christian, I have to say, you really pissed me off. I want to go on the record. I don't care who's the Democratic nominee. I only care that Donald Trump is not president next year. So the first thing I know from this is that you're an idiot. As we've argued on previous shows, if you only care that Donald Trump gets defeated, then you have to be coming from a place of privilege. Just look at you. How much more privileged can you get? Betty, this is the political party you're trying to prop up. ...that lacks any vibrancy or movement. It's stilted, stifled, and ossified. They don't even allow primary challenges to, uh, to rotted incumbents who have oozed a suffocating stench of corruption during almost three decades of incumbency in Congress, even if that incumbent has repeatedly blocked the party's own agenda, as was also demonstrated by Hillary Clinton's recent endorsement of the corruption-tainted Andrew Cuomo over his progressive primary challenger Cynthia Nixon, seeking to become New York State's first female governor. All that matters to them is closing ranks around one another, clinging as tightly as they can to their own prerogatives, clinging as tightly as they can to their own privilege, preventing anyone from disrupting their ability to greedily feed at the corporate fuel trough, which keeps them fat and satiated. And so the reason I bring this up, nothing has changed because of Trump. Both parties are just as corrupt as ever. They're just as repulsive to the average voter as anybody. They're, you're going to have half the country not show up to vote again. And they don't, and, and it's just a, Ron, just a, it's a broken system, and nobody is talking about this system. Because Justices Ginsburg and Bayer aren't going to live forever. Republicans, Democrats come and go. Control of the White House, Senate, House of Representatives is constantly flipping. But the one constant through it all is that we've had a conservative Supreme Court since Nixon. And the Supreme Court has more power to change America than any president. So picking Supreme Court justices is important. Let's see what Hillary Clinton was intending to do. But you gotta vote Hillary Clinton. Why? Because we're gonna get more war, the TPP, more deregulations, uh, more, more votes for, and we're gonna get a Republican Supreme Court. So good for you guys. You're doing great work. This is from a WikiLeaked email that shows that Hillary was trying to get a Republican on the Supreme Court. So you gotta vote for Hillary Clinton because Supreme Court. Right, you gotta vote for Hillary Clinton because Donald Trump might become president and he might appoint uh, a helium monster, or he might report. You know, he might he might appoint somebody like Scalia or Rehnquist, right, or Alito. You know, hey, we already had those guys on the Supreme Court, and the country's still here. Anyway, I was reading McClatchy. Turns out, boom! WikiLeaks reveals Clinton considered a Texas Republican for the Supreme Court. You gotta vote for Hillary. She, I know, I know. Remember when everybody was talking about, I remember this, I was on the Young Turks and we we're having a discussion about who she's going to pick for her vice president. Some people were saying Elizabeth Warren. Some people were saying she's going to pick Bernie. And I remember I made the prediction, not only is she not going to pr pick a progressive as her vice president, the pick she makes will make you go crazy. Biden is going to pick Kamala Harris or someone else who's insanely conservative. We're not going to get a progressive vice president pick. So why would you think we're going to get progressives in the Supreme Court? And she did. She picked a guy who's to the right of her. Tim Kaine is right to work. He's for pro-TPP and he's for more deregulation of Wall Street. He's Newt Gingrich. <laughs> and he's, and he's anti-abortion in his own personal life. Yes, it can't get us into needless, wasteful wars, although it can turn its back when a president does so illegally. Biden would get us into more wars than Trump would. This is so disingenuous. But with one five to four decision, SCOTUS can take away your reproductive rights because Jesus, y'all, even though, fun fact, Jesus never mentioned abortion even once. But Tim Kaine did. Supreme Court can take away your LGBTQ civil rights because religious freedom, y'all. And how does Biden feel about that? The Supreme Court can take away your racial civil rights because law and order, y'all. Take away your health care. You're telling us to vote for Biden because health care? You're telling us to vote Biden because of civil rights? What the actual fuck, Betty? You are a lying, cheating, stealing neo-libtard. 
Make your vote not count because of gerrymandering or make it harder for you to vote at all. The Democrats gerrymander more than the Republicans. They made it difficult for college students to vote in the primaries, not to mention voter roll purges and ballot machine tampering. You know what's become most progressive in American politics? The Supreme Court becoming progressively more conservative, protecting corporate profits over people's rights. And Hillary was gonna choose a Republican to be on the Supreme Court. The Democrats and the Republicans have worked together over many years to make the Supreme Court as conservative as it now is. So that's who she chose for vice president. Who do you think she's going to pick to be on the Supreme frickin' Court? WikiLeaks reveals they had already floated picking the ex-chief justice of the Texas Supreme Court because he was a minority. Because he was a minority. So if he's black and he's conservative, that'll be great. That's the identity politics we've been seeing from the Democrats this election cycle in particular. Why would we want a black prosecutor? Why would we want a black cop like Kamala as the vice president? Hasn't our first black president done more than enough harm to black and brown people the world over? If anything, Kamala is more likely to want to bring them to heel than super predator Hillary Clinton was. Wallace Jefferson, a former chief justice on the Supreme Court, was the subject of an email entitled Scalia Replacement written by the president of a George Soros back grant making organization. He sent that to John Podesta. No less than Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer, Betty Bowers, the world's best Christian, wants you to keep maintaining the status quo. That's privilege, Betty. So, being true to your progressive values and not voting for anyone running against Trump is about the least progressive thing you can possibly do right now. You know, the next time you say never Biden, why don't you just scream, make America great again? It's the same thing. Wow. It's the same thing. We've already been making fun of Mehdi Hassan and Noam Chomsky, who both are cowards. If I hadn't already watched the video, I'd think that the next thing she was going to do is tell us that we're all Russian operatives. No, Betty, never Biden is more patriotic by far than the bullshit that the neoliberals have been foisting on us for more than 40 years. So there's a, a lot of shit happening over the Supreme Court. People are losing their shit again. Again, Donald Trump steals people's critical thinking skills. Uh, Kamala Harris tweeted this about it. She said the fight over the Supreme Court vacancy is going to require each and every one of us talking with our friends, families, and neighbors about the importance of the court and the lasting impact its decisions can have on our fundamental rights. I'm ready to fight. Are you? Really? She's ready to fight. I guess she's gonna, I, I guess that's why she didn't prosecute Steve Mnuchin because she was so ready to fight. And then Peter Douche, I love Peter Douche, he tweeted out, uh, what are the odds the Democratic leadership will effective enough to stop Trump's Supreme Court pick? And it says zero or 0.0. .0. Democrats do. They'll talk all this big resistance game on Twitter and all that shit, and they won't do fucking anything. I remember Dianne Feinstein, right, during the confirmation of Mike Pompeo, her Twitter feed, all caps, resist, we don't support torture, we don't know Mr. Trump, no. She fucking voted for Mike Pompeo, who's a goddamn torturer. Shut the fuck up, Kamala Harris. You let Steve Mnuchin take my fucking house in California, go fuck your neoliberal bullshit. Republicans get in power and then they resist and they say there's nothing we can do. They had control of everything and that's when they do goddamn nothing. Chucky the Shume, he says this, Chuck Schumer warns Senate Democrats fight Brett Kavanaugh or pay the price from the base. Double CK. <laughs> And guess what they say to him? Red State Democrats tell Schumer to kiss my fucking ass on the Supreme Court vote. Democrats, resistance. 
And so he's not going to whip the votes. So what that means is he's not going to make Joe Manchin vote uh, in solidarity against it. He's not going to make uh, Kilston Gerber or all the people, Heidi Heitkamp oh. or, or Claire McCaskill. He's not going to he's not going to whip their votes, meaning you have to vote the way I say on this. He's not going to do that. Why? Because Chuck in the shoe is a fucking tool and he's a liar and he's an enemy of you. That's why. Yeah. The Democrats are controlled opposition to the Republicans. They just want to blame the Republicans for every bad thing that they hope the Republicans will keep doing. I don't know who is the bigger neoliberal tool, Devin Green, who plays Mrs. Betty Bowers, or Andrew Bradley, who's the creator and writer of Mrs. Betty Bowers. I'm saying if you wanted to Twitter flame somebody, Andrew Bradley would be the better choice. All that matters to them is closing ranks around one another, clinging as tightly as they can to their own prerogatives, preventing anyone from disrupting their ability to greedily feed at the corporate-fueled trough which keeps them fat and satiated. It doesn't matter if you're a judge. It doesn't matter if you're in the Senate or in the House. It doesn't matter if you're a political pundit or if you're some tool like Betty Bowers. All that matters to them is closing ranks around one another. Like Russia blaming, this vote-shaming bullshit really needs to stop, Betty. We all need to stand up to Mehdi Hassan, Noam Chomsky, Neera Tandon, Sneera Tandon, David Brock, Jennifer Rubin. They're all part of the same cabal. If you're like me, you undoubtedly have many friends and acquaintances who are spewing this Betty Bowers-type bullshit. If so, peruse some of the previous episodes of this show for fully packed rebuttals to this kind of garbage. I would love to do a little sleuthing on Andrew Bradley and see what his connection to the Clinton machine is. I wonder if any of the Podesta emails have his name on them. So dear viewers and listeners, I'll close with this. If you have long enjoyed Betty Bowers and the way she skewers people, I don't blame you. She's very good at it. But do not, under any circumstances, let her neoliberal vote shaming dissuade you. And if you're of my persuasion, take this opportunity to fight back. This bullshit really needs to stop.